Jum Ripsur, Namaste, Hello. It was here at Phnom Kulin in Cambodia that the mighty Khmer Empire was born when Jai Varman II anointed himself king, breaking away from the Hindu Java Empire. In this series, we will see how the Indic influence was absorbed and adopted into the local culture and is still a pivot point around which the Cambodian culture and life revolves. He suffered the pain of his subjects more than his own. Because it is the pain of the public that is the pain of kings, rather than their own pain. That's rather good, isn't it? You see, those words were inscribed back in the 12th century in numerous places, but it was a place of special significance where they would only ever appear. And that was at hospitals, because quite unbelievably, the ancient kings of that lost empire were very good at dominating the land. They were exceptional at controlling water and upping the rice yield, making their land more fertile and therefore richer. But guess what? They also built over a hundred hospitals. And just over there is one of these ancient hospitals. Now this is a doorway in that actual hospital. Behind me a small room and I'll be showing you around in just a moment and it's a fascinating sight but the story must be told first as to what happened here because that will give you a much clearer idea. It'll stimulate your imagination I often ask you to call upon. And we may look back at dear old Javavarman the seventh whose words those were and think well it was all just about priests and alike. But you would be wrong because it was remarkably modern. There are inscriptions that tell us what went into one of these hospitals. And as I say, there was over a hundred of them. The staff was extensive. There was of course priests, but there were doctors, there were nurses, there were guards, there were chemists, there was even cooks to make sure that the right food was supplied. And they used modern medicine for their turns, times, and they would have got that medicine, well, the ideas for it from many foreign lands, as well as, of course, their own. Now, allow me to just tell you what some of those were. Now, a lot, obviously, were of the local plants, but they also used honey, butter and oil, which sounds to me like a wonderful medicine of any kind, because if it doesn't work, you make a cake. But there is also inscriptions that tell of the use of mercury. And there is even one that says mercury being boiled and mixed in a gold cauldron. Just imagine that, you know, mercury is silver, you know, liquid metal in a gold cauldron with priests gathered round it. It's almost Shakespearean. But there's also something else to note here that I find very interesting, and that is the use of mercury itself, because this was widely used in the Egyptian Empire as well as in China, because it's the actual founder of China, who I believe was Emperor Qin, and he used mercury a lot to give him a mortal life. Well, obviously, it kills you. Even his tomb in China, which hasn't been opened, which is an enormous pyramid, and 
its wealth, it's what's inside it is simply staggering. If we believe the stories of the ancients, and what those stories said is it's full of jewels and gold and just amazing stuff. And they also said it had rivers of mercury. Well, guess what? They checked the soil around there and they tested it. And the mercury levels around that pyramid are off the charts. So let's have a look into this room here. And to do so, we go through this ancient doorway. And what we see as we look around is this is a very small space. I would surmise this would be a storeroom. We must keep in mind that most of the hospital was built of wood. These stone structures are in fact the chapel. On the back side of this doorway, I note something very interesting. Look at all these holes. Now there's obviously something on there and it could have been, I don't know, it could have been a deity or it could have been down the side here, a list of what should have been in this room. I mean, why not? It just makes sense. But it is all conjecture because everything has been looted as is usual. And look at this place. Isn't it beautiful? And to think that King Javavarman VII set up well over a hundred of these for his people. And he did everything he could to give them the absolute best of care. Now the care would have come in two different forms, but both would be intertwined and interlaced together. The first would be spiritual care. The second would be medicine, and it'd be from their own history as well as sourcing information from far off lands. Now, if you have a look in this doorway here, you can see flowers have been etched into this very hard stone in the doorway of where a god once stood. And here is quite the anomaly, because this is a plinth for a Shiva Linga. Our Hindu gods did make it here. But the strange thing is, this area at this time in history was Buddhist. So through this doorway, looking outward, Potentially, there was once a Shiva Linga. So to me, this would be the very centre of it all, because it shows how important faith was. We have what was probably a Linga here. We have what could potentially be the other side of it all. Because without faith in your doctors and with recent knowledge gleaned from far off lands, you can't really affect a cure. And what is interesting here is there seems to be rooms within rooms. See, there's a wall here, but as we go down, there's a smaller room, another one over here. And this makes perfect sense because you would need a place for your high priest, but then again, you need a place for those all important doctors, as well as the chemists and the nurses and so on. So what we see here potentially is that doorway where we started is where the records were kept of the medicines and so on. Over here we have a place of worship. The two combined perfectly. The hospital itself is literally just there. And then that little pan shot I just uh, made you can see that this place is directly opposite. Now, why is it important? Well, it's an orchard and it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I mean, you think you have your hospital right there. You put the patients in wooden buildings. Of course you do. The vast majority of the buildings of the ancients were made of wood, but of course you need to feed everyone, don't you? So, you have your orchard and you also have your herb gardens for your cures. 
And it's quite incredible, isn't it? That even to this day, there's still orchards butted right up against the ancient hospital. The final word on this video goes to a Chinese emissary, a man named Zhou, who came to the mighty Khmer Empire in the 13th century. And he is truly exceptional because what he did was he kept a diary. And he speaks of medicine in that diary. And he does talk of mercury and sulfur being used. He also says there was rather a strange cure of people plunging into pools and rubbing their heads vigorously. But I'll tell you what, never underestimate a placebo. And if nothing else, it certainly gets you clean. And that is half the cure with medicine. I mean, with COVID, it is our hands we are washing. This has been Mr. B of Forgotten Temples. As always, I ask you to like, subscribe and comment. And do tune in next time because I will be out there pounding those dusty tracks in search of those ancient Hindu gods, taking you on another adventure.